What is up, everybody? This is The Quad with Chris Young. As always, I am Chris. We got Haley the Bear. Hello. Producer Josh. The reigning oldest member of The Quad now. <laughs> oh, just for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Until... We got six this months. Six months. Yeah, right. months. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is June six Actually, months away? No, no, no. It's, it's not. He's just saying. He's just being goofy. Like, uh, and Ryan from Miami. So I put in a bid on eBay for the sand where Tom oh, Brady Lord. made his retirement announcement video. I'll let you guys know if I win it. I bet you did not it's place a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's already ninety grand, isn't it? Um, yeah. Put in a bid. <laughs> the, all right, who won the poll? I already know who. This won. actually was. The closest poll we've done in a very long time. So it was yeah. very competitive. It was, who's the most most underrated actor that is still currently doing movies today? Rachel McAdams won. Hey, by the way, anyone that voted for Martin Lawrence, you're out of your mind. That was the second highest was Martin Lawrence, followed by Jonah Hill and John C. Riley. All, of the, all votes, by the way, got either 19 or above percent. So it was very close yeah. between all of these. Rachel won with 31 and a half. Yeah. No, well, that's not surprising. Can you be underrated and in Marvel movies? Well, Very because she's not the she's not the main character. Like if people brush Can her you off. Be underrated and just got another movie with Will Smith greenlit. <laughs> I cannot wait for Bad Boys. What is it? Three, four, five. What are we I on did, now? I it's did. like Fast Actually, and the You know what? You know what's bad is it's the fourth one, and the third one was named Bad Boys for Life. That's what and it I'm was. Like, That's why it confused what me. What the hell? Yes. Like, why did you not save that movie title for, for the fourth life? For this life. Is, this is the new Fast and the Furious, but yeah. it's totally cool. I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. So. Um, actually, you know what? It, you, I, I was going to start with movies, but let's go to sports. Sports. Um, the Pro Bowl is awful. <laughs> That's terrible. It's that was the second. fact that Pete Davidson is a judge. Why? Not just that. What were you, what were you about to say? You're about to stat, stat it's still boy, the Ryan. second most watched All-Star game, even though it's terrible. Among the four major sports, it's the second most well, watched. Well, first of all, no one wants to watch baseball anymore. On That's TV. the highest rated uh, All-Star game, actually, is I, baseball. I know, but you know why people watch that one? Because it actually has some sort of stakes involved. It does. I love steak. So our, <laughs> our friend Corey Stewart actually said something that I really like. He goes, I'm uh, all for the Pro Bowl. I believe you have all your Pro Bowl honorees come out, and it's a vacation, fan meet and greet, fun game kind of weekend. But you make the actual game, the guys on the practice squad fighting for, uh, looking for free agency to get on a team. Mm. Or well, like they're they're people who aren't signed trying to get on a team, like undrafted free yeah. agents. So, so what yeah. you're saying is the XFL? <laughs> what you're saying is the AFL, which just relaunched? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, it did. My aunt was really excited about it because my aunt cheered for the Chicago Rush for forever, and was and ended up being the director. I love so that. she said, if she if they bring one down to Fort Lauderdale, she's a hundred percent in. Let's go. Anyway, yeah. hey, so look, how do we fix this? More more people watch it than come to you know any of my shows. So <laughs> let, let's start there. I'm not trying to. Throw stones out of a glass house, which is one of my favorite sayings. But I have an idea. I, d I don't. I, no, no. I've got ideas. I don't want to run down the list of them because they don't care. <laughs> as long as they get viewership, Ryan, to your point, they don't care. And I mean, that's, that's they, a fraction of the viewership they get for a regular season game. But Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, they're just basically like grasping at straws at this point, it feels like. Flag it feels, football! It it feels broken. Kirk Cousins led a rally, a, ra a winning rally. I mean, that's that's oh, making you headlines. Had, you watched the entire thing. Oh, I watched it. I was into it. Man, you got to see personalities, no helmets on. You got to see these guys smile, dude. interact with each other. <laughs> dude, no, they're trying. That's you know, terrible. No. It was it they're was trying. so bad. They're they're playing random games against each other. D Kirk Cousins, you know is, at this why point, is Peyton Manning there? Eli, <laughs> I'd that's... watch it if it was a dodgeball tournament. You know, <laughs> they did that. They did. I would those. rather. I would rather them take exactly what they were doing before, but then have Pat McAfee and Peyton Manning host it. That'd be fun. I would love to see McAfee host something like that. That would be interesting. That, that to me would be fun. And you want to trot Pete Davidson out there and let him catch a pass over the middle? Fine. See, that's where that's where I think they could they could hit a home run. If you combined, if you made it like celebrity, 
NFL Pro Am where you, uh, had, that'd be you cool. had celebrities and, Think and of for, WWE and like punt what pass, they do. punt pass and catch, but with like Pete Davidson trying to out throw Dak or whomever. That's cool. I like that, that would be fun. Put me that, in, coach. That would be fun. Or Put someone trying in. to out kick Justin Tucker and see like how much better he really is That'd than the great. average person. By the way, Josh Jacobs quote on this year's uh, Pro Bowl quote: "This ish is stupid." Yeah, That's I, Josh I I'm with Josh <laughs> Jacobs on this one, which I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but there we are. All right, um, Tom Brady retires again. Hooray! He should have stayed retired. Yeah, he sorry, should've. Tom. He posted an underwear photo this morning. No one cares. <laughs> Well, when you're retired, you know, you, you wake up in your underwear. Um, by the way, I don't think it is, and I'll, I said this last time he retired, and I, I also don't want to come across as just one of those guys that's sitting at home that is, you know, as much stuff as I've accomplished in my career in music, I've never accomplished the level that he has in his, or may never you this know, is like a that, thirst trap photo from Tom Brady. That, uh, I stop told it! You. Get, get, I stop, can't believe that you pulled stop, it up. I pulled it up. Stop! Have you stop, seen this, Chris? Stop! Stop! Let this. me finish my thought I before just, you start talking about Tom Brady in his underwear. Okay. okay? <laughs> okay. I don't want it's to. Like a scene from Troy. <laughs> <laughs> great! Oh, yeah, that movie did great. Yeah. Um. It, Can it just again, just, just there. Forward. There will come a day when everyone whether they are made to or they want to in any sort of entertainment sport, any of that retires. Now what that means to them, that doesn't mean they're obviously going to stay out of the public spotlight, especially somebody like Tom Brady, who's the goat. Like it, it, he's, he's the greatest of all time. Sorry. I, I wish it was a Cowboys player, but it's not, it's, it's Tom Brady. What I'm saying is, the only thing that I can speak to, because I'm not him and I never played football in the NFL, all I can speak to is is from a musician perspective. And even people that retire see George Strait still play. Mm-hmm. People can retire and come back. Brooks and Dunn is coming back for another tour. They've already done a farewell tour. Garth. And is crushing it. But I, I wanted, I really, I mean this. I really wanted to see Tom Brady come back and be good, but he was not. He wasn't. He wasn't very good. I have a question. You mean when he won the Super Bowl after he retired? No, I meant. Well, wait. Well, that was no, the no, year no, no, before no. he retired. He won it in 2020. Yeah, he he won the Super Bowl, yeah. then retired, then came back this okay, year. Okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood yeah. what you said. Question. I'm saying I really wanted him to come back and be like, yeah, I'm going to stay in the league for a couple more years. And obviously, he's got a lot of stuff going on in his personal life that I don't even want to get into because I don't talk about people's personal lives. But he just it wasn't very good this year, man. Do you, you think I'm wrong? I don't think you're wrong, but I do have a question that was posed by Titan star Taylor Lewan, which was retire the number 12 league-wide in honor of no, Tom Brady. No, no. Yes or no? No, no, no. Absolutely not. Retire it in New England. Fine. NBA has twenty three retired league wide. No, no, no. They do not. They, do they not. should. They do not. They do not. They do not. Jackie Robinson's number is retired league wide, forty two in baseball. I'm pretty sure That's, Bill Bill Russell's is number six. No. Well, LeBron wore number six a few years ago with the Heat, but Dude, I think since they, then, they've I, retired. I, since then. I I don't think you. Re- I don't think. I'm you just curious. That. No. That was a, that was a goat proposed question there from uh, Taylor Lewan, so. No. All right. Not in my opinion. Josh. 12 is already retired by four teams, though. Jets, Bills, Dolphins, and the 49ers. Yeah, so no. So That's exactly. A, it, it, it's That number doesn't mean is as it much Rogers as you think 12? it does. Rogers is yes. 12. Yeah, so like, that doesn't make <laughs> any sense. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to retire his number? Before so he he's even play, retired. He has to play one more year yeah, before he, he retires. He won't have that number in Green Bay anymore, I'll tell you that much. Oof. All right. Obviously, we'll get to the Super Bowl later. We've already made our picks, so not much to say there. Uh, Josh, you want to scroll through the NBA real quick? Kyrie Irving was traded from the Brooklyn Nets to the Dallas Mavericks for 
a 2027 second round pick and a 2029 first and second round pick unprotected. Why? Also Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith. That's a long ways away for a pick. Which is amazing because you're trading for someone who is notoriously uh, just gets pouty and doesn't play. For sure. So here, here's the plus. Here's the negative. <laughs> The plus side is they're not actually giving up that much for him. Spencer Dinwiddie is a fine player. He's going back to the Nets, who he used to play for, who he got his first big deal from. Well, they at least have a player now to replace Kyrie Irving, who was not the, playing anyway. Correct. I, I'm not thrilled about that. Sorry. That sits just poorly with me. And they're getting back Kyrie and Markeith Morris, who is an excellent 3 and D defender. So that's a wash with the Dorian Finney-Smith thing. You get Kyrie. Kyrie is a much better basketball player than Spencer Didwin is. I think it's low risk. However, if they don't re-sign him after this season, this is a colossal, colossal catastrophe. I think the fit on the floor will be fine. We've seen Kyrie work with another ball-dominant small forward in LeBron James all the way to a title. Did it implode? Yes. Was that Kyrie Irving's fault? Yes. Is Kyrie Irving... (laughs) Tough to play with. You're not making it better. (laughs) No, I know. I get it. Look, I get all the reasons why. But uh, on a basketball fit, I don't think there's going to be an issue. Um, And I think you have to. I think if you're the Dallas Mavericks, you have to prove to Luka that you want to put stars around him. You tried with Porzingis. That didn't really work. Is is Sacramento going to make the playoffs? Oh, yeah. They're the four seed right now. I love them. I love them. They're my favorite team right now. Isn't that the team that hasn't made the playoffs? Yes. That is... (laughs) This is the longest. I love them. That's why I brought it up. I and called I, it. I said, and I disagreed, so I have to concede to you, Josh. Mike Brown, coach of the year. That, absolutely not. Um, a four seed is not coach of the coach year, Coach of the year, buddy. Mike Brown. <laughs> it's not coach they of the year. They make the playoffs. <laughs> coach of the year. No. no. I, I still disagree with that one. What I will say is I, I said they wouldn't, and it looks like they're – locked in so they're at least going to make the playoffs for yeah, sure yeah for sure for sure right there's it's it's a statistical impossibility for it's, them to it's not. not impossible but it would be very oh unlikely. boy that would be so sacramento of them to just bomb out and oh not make god the playoffs. but don't i didn't even mean to put that in the universe they would have sacramento to go fans, something I'm like sorry. 10 and 22 out of the last 32 I'm, but i'm really sorry i'm really sorry i did, did, did we do let's don't even talk about it anymore. <laughs> i'm trying to give you credit for something and then watch, <laughs> watch it. here's what i want to ask on Kyrie. Be, anybody from sacramento will hate me from here on out if they <laughs> here's what i want to ask on Kyrie because we we now have evidence of his Nike breakup. There was, I mean, when he was with the Cleveland Cavs, he didn't talk to his teammates before the playoffs. No, one year. Kyrie is is a problem he, in the locker room. It didn't work in Bo- in Boston. And, it didn't work and in, in the media in in Brooklyn. How? Why do we have any evidence it's going to work because he's going to be paired up with Luca? It's what, not. What What do you mean by work? Cohesiveness. They're going for. They're going all in to win a championship. That's the goal here by trading for Kyrie Irving. I think. I think basketball wise, it works, and I think that because if he, he plays. Is, if he plays, it works, and I think because Luca is the star and the franchise face, some of the pressure is off of Kyrie, which is exactly what happened in Cleveland with LeBron. LeBron got to absorb a lot of the attention. Kyrie got to just sit back and play basketball. I think that's where he likes to be. He liked to do that with okay. Kevin, Kevin Durant, but it did not work out but that way. How long does it take before Kyrie's like, oh, well, I want to be the, the guy again? I can't answer that. I don't know. It might. He, this might be humbling he may leave the Mavs after the season and go to the Lakers on a veteran minimum I don't know what's going to happen I think he if he really wanted to go somewhere he should have gone to the Lakers the Lakers were in talks but they wanted so much from the Lakers I know they wanted Austin Reeves Max Christie Russell Westbrook plus both the 27 and 29 first round draft picks I would have given them 29 and Russell they they wanted all of the all of the rest of it Yeah, they're not getting that. Nope. Speaking of the Lakers, LeBron, 38 points away from becoming the all-time scoring leader in NBA history. Does he do it tonight against OK City? Uh, OK City. Yes, sir. OK City. You mean? Yes, you know what I mean. Uh, (laughs) Yes or no? Quick, go down. Starting with Ryan. Yes. No, I think he does it against the Milwaukee Bucks, who Kareem used to play for before the Lakers. I think that's symbolism. It happens a game later. I'm going to go with you on this one. I Mm -hmm. think it's two games from now. I think there's no one on OKC or OK City that can defend him. So if, <laughs> no he, matter what, if, he, if he wants to go get 50, he can go do it. Josh Giddy is not shutting down LeBron. Josh Giddy. I'm Just because my feelings for LeBron, it's going to take him two more, day, 
two more games. Okay. That's going to be a really cool moment, though, by the way. Like, <laughs> where you were moment when it happens. Just just in terms of sports history. It doesn't feel that way, though. It, yeah. It really? Doesn't. It doesn't. It's just scoring points. Does it feel that way to you? Yeah. This is this is what this, this is, was the unbreakable record. This was, was it the not? unbreakable record? Well, okay. He's been in the league for a hundred years. No, 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 no. That's not why. I feel like like are they do they are they even in a playoff spot right now? Thirteenth, thirteenth. Right that's that's why. However, I think if they were, no no, I'm saying I think if they were in a playoff spot right now, there would be so much more attention on this. If those four really terrible calls against the Lakers go the, go the Lakers' way, they are in like the five or four seed right now. They would be in the four seed. They go from the 13th to the four seed if those four terrible calls had gone the Lakers' way, which they should have. They'd be the four seed right now. I did not realize yes, that. There were four atrocious calls. The, the difference between the four seed and the 13 is like literally four games right now. The West is... So they might be able to play their way in. I think if AD can get healthy and stay on the court if they can <laughs> that was, first of all that's always been the question the entire time he's been there it's if everyone's healthy then they can have a yeah, shot for right sure, for sure lebron by the way the best ability is availability lebron is 36 points away not 38 not that two really makes that big of a it does uh, no it does okay it so does. does he hit it trust me 36 um, yes okay all right, fine. You you and Haley are no. I, I'm switching my vote. I'm going with Josh. Oh, it's okay. yes. All right. I think he does it tonight. I All think right. that he likes Daryl Morey a lot. Uh, no, yeah, Daryl Morey. He's at, he's okay, see. Um, okay. All right. We, we, no, Sam Presti. Dang it, Josh. Stupid. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? He is every you're the You're points. the resident NBA guy. Is this like this is Dude, brain fog from being I, sick for the last couple of days? I can't believe this, though. Through 48, 33 games this year, he's averaging 30 points. That's the third highest scoring rate of his 20 NBA seasons. Like, LeBron, I, I don't get it. How the hell is this guy still a machine 20 years into doing this and Bro, doing it better than the game I went Dude, to? He, he broke is, his career three-point. Like, he insane. is Josh's age. He is he is a month <laughs> older than I am. Like he, <laughs> we're almost like just, the same at basketball. Just think about that. That was awesome. It's true. Think about that. Like let that rattle around in your brain oh, and realize how impressive this guy is. It's rattling. Uh All when right. he came into the league, it we was did. George Bush's <laughs> First <laughs> term. term. Oh God! How, how's, that, oh, how's that for some for some that's, per, perspective? That's, that's a historical lesson, right there. Let's go to movies. <laughs> movies. You're not that old, by the way, Josh. For the record, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I no, feel, I feel dude, it. by the way, like me and Josh are separated by like five months, six months, four months, something like that. Yeah. It, so, I mean, I could have said me, but I'm technically it's way more still fun. 37. Yeah, you're 37. He's you're 38. Not, you're not here yet. Sorry, Josh is 38. Which that feels old. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. You know. <laughs> Why does 38 sound older than 30? Wait, I mean, when, I know it is was older. It? Was it this past weekend? It was Friday. Yeah. I, I knew all of us text you, but I, I was trying to think in context of uh, we didn't say anything last week on the podcast. I think you mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got a lot of love on Instagram, by the way. For yes. This. Well, there you go. Thank you, everyone. Um, Army of Thieves rated our 2021 thriller, two hours and seven minutes, 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Kind of disappointed with that. I thought it was better than that. Uh, 77% of Google users like this movie. I think that's most likely because this is a spinoff of a zombie franchise, but this is more about literally what's in the title, an army of thieves. Um, in this prequel to Army of the Dead, a mysterious woman recruits bank teller Dieter to assist in a heist of impossible to crack safes across Europe. Um, which I love because even even in here, they they name him as Ludwig Dieter, Dieter instead which, of Sebastian, Sebastian which yeah. is what his actual name is. That's interesting, right? Yeah. All right. How many people watch this movie? I did. My weekend was uh, taken by heist from News Nation, so I was not able to watch the movie. I so, sat down to watch the movie and watch something else. So it's you and me. Let's go. Um, what did you think? I was very surprised on how much I liked this movie. I I told you it is not. It is from a... And maybe... It, it makes more <clears> sense <throat> what you had said after I watched it, 
but going into it, I was like, I right. don't know. You know, I hate zombies. You know, I hate but all there's, this stuff. It's not. It's not a zombie movie. It's not at all. It it is the prequel, which I like the origin story of a character that ends up being in a zombie movie in the next film. And I have no desire to see the zombie film except for maybe to fast forward to see <laughs> how how he gets Him integrated. Cracking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this this one reminds me of. And I may need some help here because I did not look this up beforehand, and I should have. Uh, what's the movie with Angelina Jolie? Wanted. Yes. Thank you. You immediately knew well where done. I was going. Yes. Well done. Um, I was going to say, and the guy that plays Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> not Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gone in 60 it, seconds. It, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is that to me it is this guy that is not in this world that gets drug into it who has an aptitude like, for a he certain has, thing he has an aptitude for a certain thing and he has a very mundane life and he hates his job and his whole thing is like it, i like the twist they put on it with you know being in the world that we're in now where you know anyone and everyone has access to make a youtube channel or uh, how to or anything but there are certain people that just break through and become popular and, and he's not one of those guys but he has this love of safe cracking Time for some spoilers. and um decides basically by this random person on the internet he gets one like on a video and the comment underneath it is like show up here this address this password and wins a safe cracking competition and becomes a part of a crew and then like falls in love with the girl and like there, there's so many layers to this and he's kind of the the nondescript guy and there's it, there's a love triangle involved in this and then loyalties are tested and there's a whole link back to technically i mean music <laughs> what do you mean um so oh yeah got it what the, how the safes are named yeah, kind yeah. Of, they're the different movements of a symphony and yes. and, and yeah. so he turns on yeah. the nerd. music to i'm a nerd yeah, sorry no, i got it sorry I got sorry, it. sorry uh but yeah it, it, it's just really really cool and especially i will say this not that you wouldn't necessarily watch these two movies and know that one was a prequel to the other. It's more of an origin story of a character that's in another movie. Correct. Completely separate, right? Correct. But it's awesome to watch it. Having seen Army of the Dead. How do you rank them against each other? Do you like Thieves better? I... It's it's tough because they're different. They're so different. They're so different. It, it that's it's kind of like, do you like um, Colin Baton Rouge or when you say nothing at all better? <laughs> it's like they're so it's like, different songs. It's like I right. I like them both. It's but I I thought they did a great job. I love this movie. I I was very I love heist movies. I loved that it wasn't necessarily about the money also it was about the pride of breaking well, and that's for 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 some of them it <laughs> yeah i mean this this is a relatively new movie so it's true um it says 2021 i know we're in 23 but it was about to say i feel like the window of spoilers is is past when it's two years later mm, it's Wait, not do really do two months. years later though it's well it's six not. more months is what we need <laughs> It's not really two years later. We just, and it's February, dude. <laughs> Could have come out fall of 21. Yeah, right, exactly. Barely a um, year. So, I, I, would, I would recommend people, if they like heist movies, to watch this. And it was, it's lighthearted in its tone. It doesn't feel like an overly heavy movie. I definitely get the wanted thing. It had a lot of, like, if you've seen uh, Now You See Me, like that, those movies where it's just kind of like sleight of hand and very, very. It is rated by IMDb as the 24th best heist movie. Uh, for the record, the movie we watched I the, mean, the movie we watched last week, which was um, 
Den of Thieves is 10th on this list. What's the top five? The top five heist movies, according it to our friends at IMDb. While. At number five, Inside Man. <laughs> Great movie. At number four, The Bank Job. Great movie. At number three, Italian Job. I figured that was coming. At number yeah. two, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I don't consider that really interesting. Nice. Uh, well, it, yeah, is. it is. It is. It is. It's in reverse, but like the the people doing the heist are the bad guys. Right? And yeah. the best heist and bank robbery movie of all time, according to our friends at IMDb.com, is Heat from 1995. <laughs> I've never seen any of those top five movies. You've oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've, you've never, never seen, seen Italian Job? No. Die Hard with a Vengeance? No. Inside Man? No. Ocean's wow. Eleven is seventh on this list. I feel like that is that should be higher. That's low. I, I think most likely what that is and for the rating is because um i mean it's it's a remake right for oceans yeah yeah and so i i think most likely that gets knocked down a peg because they're like oh it already existed and they just put fresh George faces Clooney on it, and yeah. brad pitt and but even, but even i mean to me well. I, <laughs> I think that's awesome like i i love the oceans movies I do. I even I, and I've I've talked about this before. I love Ocean's Eight. Ocean's Eight, I thought incredible. Ocean's Eight was insanely good, incredible. And I I did not expect to love it as much as I did. So, are we going heist movie again next week? <clears throat> no. Guess no? what? Guess what's out in the theater that I really want to see? What? Knock at the cabin. Oh, are you getting another scary movie? No, 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 no. That. It um, says cabin in it. That's usually scary. It's, it's uh, one with uh, Dave, Dave Batista, Batista and it's um, so it's Dave Batista mo- month now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fine. <clears throat> Basically, it's a family at a cabin and they knock at the door and they have to kill someone in oh, order to yeah, save the the world. So murder mystery. We're getting close M. to M. Night real- Shyamalan. It's an M. Yeah. Night Shyamalan yeah. film. Okay, yeah. you know I can get behind that. We're getting close to some really good theatrical movies coming out. Because yeah, we have we're, this. we're getting close to movie season. Quantumania, I think, is the week after. Wow, you, I'm really stuffed up. You are, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm the one that's also coughing off. And then my, in I March, I'm not sick. In March, do you know what's coming out? What? John Wick Four. Oh, oh yes. yeah, gotta gotta go see. Also that one. rewatched gotta all that three one. of the John Wick movies this weekend. Also, there is going to be a four, a five, and a six. What? He is signed on for two more wow. after four. Wow. So that's the new Fast and the Furious. See, I okay. I would rather not know that going in. I would. I, I know because I'd want to know when he when he's going to die. Yeah. Now I know at he, some he gets point he gets never dies. He gets caught, right? Does he have to die? Not necessarily, but I mean, it could be a prequel. I don't know. So Time for some he dies in the seventh movie. James Bond did. Uh, <laughs> all right. So next week, knock at the cabin or you people? What are we going with? Knock, knock at, at the cabin. cabin. All right. I want to see cabin. it, and I actually have time this week, so. An like hour and that. forty minutes. That's a nice, nice little brisk movie. You know, in and out. You quick. know what? Maybe we all go see it. It's been a while since we've done that. Like that plan. Well, Saturday night movie action. Maybe next weekend. I could do that. I can't do Saturday night. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk. About we'll this figure week. it out. We'll talk figure about it software. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let's do a quick music, and then we'll do the hot take. Music. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, oh, I was holding it. Remix that. I was holding. Oh it. my god, it was almost in time. <laughs> I got rhythm in my bones, you know. <laughs> yeah. What? <clears throat> um, weekend number two is in the books. Uh, big shout out to everybody that came out this weekend. We had some amazing packed out shows in Indiana and Michigan. Um, have a lot more content that's coming your way that we'll continue to post, but had, uh, Monsell, our video editor, who is now my full-time videographer on the road out there. Put some cool social media content up too. I was watching. Yeah. We, stuff. We're working on, on trying to get more of that out there. And I, I did a, we're still editing it, but I did a mic'd up thing. Oh, where heck yeah. The sound check is just me being an idiot. Let's go. Mic'd it's, up. it's fun. Love it's that. cute. You definitely need to start doing that. <clears throat> Look at that little little mic'd up action. We'll yeah. see why mic'd up. I like this. Uh, he, I was also mic'd up during meet and greet, so that was fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you looked rather cold in Gary, Indiana. Was Wait, are it, you uh, back hey, on, dude? Let me put it this way: um, it it was not the Northeast. 
um, which it, there there was I, I believe it was was it New Hampshire negative one hundred eight it was negative one hundred eight yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yes yeah did, did you, you not hear about this, this? <laughs> I'm sorry one hundred eight yes negative one hundred eight was the wind chill. <laughs> Like day after tomorrow, 108? Uh, dude, it was bad. It was yeah. bad. Uh, Mount Washington windchill, New Hampshire summit fell to minus 108 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. But it, it was definitely like uh, in <laughs> in the single digits or below. Um, it froze up the water lines on the bus this weekend. Oof. Oof. <laughs> so at one point I was like, mm, I might, that, that might be taking a shower inside somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, the... It, it was uh, very cold. <laughs> you, trying, I'm, negative 108, you're still in your mind? It was I'm not still, negative 108 I'm still trying to fathom <laughs> negative 108. Like, it was not negative 108, but it was, it was very cold. They also had, by the way, 97 mile per hour winds in Mount Washington. So take in the negative 108 wind chill and combine it with the 97 mile per hour winds, which is basically a category one hurricane, I believe. Good Lord. Yeah. So literally the movie Day After Tomorrow. Yes. There are people freeze on the Correct. spot. I Correct. hope you guys are okay. I hope you're okay. Everybody if you're in there. Mount Washington, please reach out. Yeah. <laughs> please let us know. Let us know that let you're still here. I will okay. say yeah. I don't envy you. No. I, I look, I love cold weather. That's not cold weather. That is ridiculous. I will say, though, the people from Mount Washington seem to be, you know, pretty chill. Ryan. The views of Ryan Bass do not encompass the quad with Chris Young or any of the rest of us. The jokes of Ryan Bass do not reflect oh my God. the humor of the quad with Chris Young. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, big shout out. Thank you, guys. There were so many people singing looking for you this weekend. It was awesome. It was awesome. Love Absolutely that. amazing. So uh, definitely keep streaming that one. Request, like, review. Five stars. Bear, I do have one thing for you <laughs> because we had a lot of positive reviews from our Instagram on the gear, the merch. People love how comfy the sweaters are. Any merch update from you because people are loving it right now. No, nope. they're there. Please order them. All right. Love that. We did get some camo requests, by the way. So, uh, you know, I Christmas love camo. List maybe from for next year. Yeah, mm. I do love camo. So don't be surprised if you see some when, more when camo. does hunting season start? Should we? Yeah. <laughs> Josh. Now? <laughs> I'm really good at country music. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it, buddy. You got it. Okay. Uh, let's go with what are you listening to? Um, who wants to start? I'll start. Oh, wow. Mine's a little longer this week, though. It's a, it's kind of a podcast version, but it is Big Booty Mixes. Have you ever heard, heard Two Friends? Two Friends. Is a, I love Two Friends. Volume 22 of the Big Booty Mix. <laughs> go and check it out. What is that happening? Is not, that is not what I expected. <laughs> Josh, what do you have? Just when I think I've got Ryan figured out. <laughs> uh, mine this week is actually a song that's coming out this Friday that I was a co-writer on. Uh, it's for my friend Allie. If you want to find her on Instagram, it's got to be Allie. We wrote this song. Spell Allie. A-L-E-E. -E. Allie. That's why I said spell it. Appreciate that. Uh, the, the song's called Love Songs, but it's actually a really cool story. She was playing a show last year and was singing uh, When You Say Nothing At All, and some lady came up and paid her $20 to stop singing. And she's like, uh, okay, why? She goes, well, that was uh, my my wedding song, and I just got divorced, which is why oh, I'm in Nashville. God. Oh. And so she goes, you know, some love songs aren't love songs anymore, and walks off. And Allie was like, uh, that's a brilliant idea. Okay. So we so she hit me up and we wrote the song. She put out a teaser. It actually blew up viral on on TikTok earlier this week, a couple days ago. Um, well over a million. And so we're trying to find this woman now, because there's a woman out there that doesn't know that we wrote a song inspired by her story. And so, it, what's the, the hook? Has got to be love songs. Uh, the song is the song is called Love Songs. It's um. Some love songs, they ain't love songs anymore. I love that. I like the idea of Ooh, that. Thanks. Yeah. That's that's heavy, real. It's good. And we um, want to find this woman. By the way, we would like to try and find this lady. So any of you guys that are listening to the podcast right now. Um, Check out let's, Allie's let's socials. Find let's find her. Well, we're, we're trying. I think it'd be really cool if we found, found this lady because I think she has no send idea. Me, send me the link to this song because I'll try and this get cool. some of the people from Sony to. Will do. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag find her. All right. So this Friday, sorry, coming out. Bear. Was it me by Shaggy? <laughs> it wasn't me. You're welcome. That doesn't need an explanation. <laughs> I love that. I'm it surprised no me. one went with any Nelly or Fat Joe songs or Fabulous, given that the concert in town this weekend. But uh, I don't think it because any of us went. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I can if you'd like me to just I, rip hey, one off the top. That it was literally literally nostalgia weekend in Nashville with uh, Chingy, Fat Joe. Fabulous, Ashanti, Ja Rule, Nelly, all in town. Pretty crazy. Also, congrats to right. our dude, Mitchell Tenpenny, for selling oh, out the Rhyme yes. two nights in two a row. Two nights in a row. Well yes. Done. M10. Huge shout out. Huge shout out. Ten Pen, baby. Um, Tenny Penny. So I will actually go with. Um, uh, 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 uh. What's Love? Ooh. Featuring Ja Rule and Ashanti by Fat Joe. Yes. Getting three in there. I like yeah. That. Well done. What a great era of music that was. Oh, so good. It truly was. Is that is that two thousands R and B hip hop? Is that or yeah, that's yeah, that's early two thousand. Oh, yeah, it's got to be early aughts. Great times. <sighs> All right. Well, there's your songs. Um, let's go to the hot take. Hot take. I already know I'm going to lose this week, so I'm just going to go first. Since we are getting close to Valentine's Day, when is that? February 14th. A Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So it'll be next week. So we're going a little bit early. But. Never too early for love. Since. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Amen, brother. Oh, uh, Ryan's writing songs over here. Give him the, give really the hard, hands, song, yeah. hard hands. Hard hands. Maybe. Um. Yeah. I just thought of something stupid. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to keep it moving. Uh, best date night movie genre. And you, are, if you know me, you already know where I'm going. It's scary movies for me. Ugh. I'm sorry. Like, there's nothing better than sitting in a theater next to a girl, her being scared, just leaning over on you. And why has it got to be the girl that's scared? Because... I, yeah, I was going to say, me. I'm also saying scary movies, and it's normally the guy I've seen Ryan jump a million <laughs> times. So they got to hold on to you for once. Yeah, Haley was actually holding on to me in, in the theaters one, uh, one time. <laughs> yeah, my eyes. Re respectfully, I cannot do scary movie because it presents me in a, a, a light that I do not, I do not want to portray. <laughs> Just terrified. But, uh, but me, I've never been a chick flick kind of girl, so I'm always going to lean towards scary movies. Okay. Well, then, are, are you guys going to go romantic films? Uh, I am not going to go rom-com, even though I, I am well-versed in many rom-coms. Uh, I think I think comedy is always a, a, a really fun move. Uh, you get a lot. You get a good sense of someone based on what they laugh at. Yeah. And Their sense of comedy with their sense or, of humor their yeah. sense of humor their timing etc or like even the subtle jokes that are not as set up you know if people laugh at those i'm like oh you get it you get this so i'm gonna go comedy well i guess me being uh you know the natural romantic that i am <laughs> you know when you think of netflix and chill which is you know the perfect whoa kind hey, of movie, hey, hey. <laughs> You gotta light the candles, light a candle. You gotta set the mood right. <laughs> I see what you did there. And when you do that, you gotta put on a romantic movie because there's nothing better than just kicking back, relaxing, Netflix and chilling, and watching 15 minutes of that romantic movie, and then going on with your uh, with your day. Wow. Just 15 minutes of chocolate. Um. <laughs> or the Notebook. Oh my gosh. Right okay. Oh my How do I get out of this? Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. The Quad with Chris Young. As always, I'm Chris from Haley. Ryan, Josh, and myself, we love you guys. Thank you for listening every week. Tell your friends. Subscribe, write, rate, review, and well. Out!